yeah and then in the end i gave a picture of su11 I, I it was kind of too quick too fast so i'm uh, I'm, I'm going to review it with a, a bit more careful um okay so first of all su11 can be seen to be diffeomorphic to this solid torus right so circle uh times uh the the, the open unit disk and well, one of the things is that how how does one see that this this I, I'm not I, I don't quite know. I mean, how one can come up with that for the first time, right? I mean, because I, I I just found it in a book, so I cannot really say okay. So how does it occur to you that this is the case, right? So I guess if one thinks about it long enough, um, yeah, or if one is very smart, right? Um, but in any case, once one finds it, one finds it in a book, kind of. The book tells you, okay, so it's through this formula, right? So you use this explicit computation of the entries of the elements of the group, right? And then you just do this, like for instance, uh, uh, it, this is clear that this is in, in the disk, right? And then using the other, this, this kind of funny equality, that, uh, this, that this norm square minus this norm square equal, is equal to one, somehow this tells you that that this other number really lies in the disk, right? And then you can define the inverse, uh, okay? And then once you have them, well, then you know that this is the case. And then the next thing is uh, to, to try to, to visualize kind of the parts of SU11 as sitting in this torus. That's the next um, point. By the way, when I, see, when I say that I read it in a book, it's in a book by uh, Gregory Siegel. Uh, that I actually recommend having a look at. Um, because this is this is uh, from the London Mathematical Society. Yeah. Uh, right. So so when I see when I say the different parts, how the different parts sit inside it. What I mean is, I mean we have we have three well three well identified parts namely the part consisting of elliptic elements the part consisting of parabolic elements and the part consisting of hyperbolic elements there are no loxodromic elements because um, because if you give me a loxodromic mobis transformation it doesn't uh, preserve bijectively any disk and since the elements of SU11 preserve the Poincaré disk bijectively, well, it cannot have uh, loxodromic elements, um, which is good news because because somehow the somehow the loxodromic elements are kind of their, their geometry is kind of way too complicated. So at least it's kind of good news that the elements with the most complicated geometry are not kind of are, are excluded are going to be excluded from the isometric groups of the uh, hyperbolic plane but anyway so that's that that's what i have in mind so uh so you see when i take a point in the torus um well i go i go to it to to su11 using this psi Right, so I have this explicit matrix corresponding to it, and I and I can perfectly ask, like I can clearly ask, how the type of this matrix, right? Is it is it is, does it give me an elliptic transformation, a parabolic or a hyperbolic, right? And so so kind of I go with the easiest because uh, for parabolic I have equality equal to four, so I have so so okay so the trace. The trace is, in terms of this matrix, is simply uh, this plus this square. Um, it already has the terminant. This one already has the terminant one. Uh, yeah, and then I compute, and then I get to this, right? And then, and then the, the point is this quantity, which is the trace, and tells me the type of the transform of the Mobius transformation, is equal to four precisely when this is equal to one, right? So this is equal to four precisely when this is equal to one, which happens if and only if these two, these two uh, quantities are equal. Uh, right, and then this, this, is, this, this, uh, this equality obviously happens if and only if this is equal to one. So that's, that's already obvious. 
And so, so what I see here, what I see here is, see, Z lives in, a, in this open disk, right? And then somehow, uh, if you see it, somehow the, this, this is this is not really this is not W, but it's kind of uh, this 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 one somehow lives how to say in an interval, right? Um, and so this this really looks like the uh, this really looks like the equation defining a, a sphere in R three. Right? Because this one has two real coordinates, and this is another real coordinate. So this really looks like something square plus something square, so like plus the sum of two squares equal to one. So it really looks like a like a sphere. And so what I'm going to realize, what I realize is that um, you see when I when I draw the 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 circle. Uh, where W lives, right? So W, W lives here, right? So somehow, somehow, if I keep track only of its uh, of its uh, real part, for instance, when I when I do this, let's say, right? Somehow, what happens to the real part? Well, it goes and then comes back, right? So, so I can think I can think that uh, that kind of this segment of the circle. Is some it can be obtained just from from this interval by kind of by just kind of deforming it, right? And same with this thing, right? So, uh, so that's that's how that's how, how that's how I am going to think, because you see when I consider only only the real part of W, which is what I consider here, only the real part of W. With respect to that coordinate here, I have a sphere. So I can just draw it, right? But here, this 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 would be in the drawing. This drawing would be in really in the interval zero one, which would be the real part. So let me let me write it with a with a pink. So it would be in the real the real part of W um, times uh, the disk. Oops. Times the disk. That's where this picture lives, right? And somehow that sphere, that sphere represents this equality. That is, it represents this equality. So it really represents the parabolic elements. But then I know I, what then I see. You see, it's here. What I drew here is really just this segment. And what I'm interested in is not that segment, but this segment of the circle. So what I do is kind of I I, I deform this picture, this picture. Kind of just in the same way that I deform this interval into this in, into this interval of the circle, and I draw, uh, you see, and then I see what's the image of the sphere when I when I when I when I go to this picture. So so I, I have something like this, something the sphere this this kind of white sphere becomes like a, a like some sort of like a, like a sausage or like a banana, right? But it's kind of it's the skin, right? It's the skin that gives me the parabolics. And then I realized, okay, but this this described me this described only this part. To describe the other part, I kind of I have to do the same, consider the same picture, but deform it, deform it, deform it in the other on the other side, right? And so, so I obtain this other this other copy of this kind of banana shape, uh, whose skin gives me the parabolics. Okay, so. So now at least at least I know how kind of how the the parabolic elements look like sitting here, right? When I visualize S one one as the as the solid torus, right? And then and then uh, somehow I should expect that on one side, uh, on 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 one side of the of in, like an, of the in inside of the banana, I uh, I have elliptics, and on the outside I have um, hyperbolics. Uh, and so, uh, to find to find the hyperbolics, so so to find the hyperbolics. Well, so the Mobius trace of a hyperbolic uh, lies in the open interval for infinity. So to determine to determine those those 
elements that whose associated matrix give, is a, uh, gives a hyperbolic Mobius transformation, this has to be strictly greater than four. So this quantity has to be strictly greater than four. This means this quantity has to be strictly greater than one, which means that uh, so this has to be strictly greater than one. So this means that I must have here this inequality in order to have par uh, hyperbolic. And this is then equivalent to this one. Okay. And so this inequality here tells me the hyperbolic ones really lie outside the sphere. So, he, so in this picture, the, the hyperbolic elements really lie outside of the, of the banana shapes. And, as, and, and I, I'm going to see a, 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 a nicer picture in a moment. And for the elliptics, a matrix, a matrix of determinant one, a matrix gives me an elliptic transformation if and only if its Mobius trace lies between zero and four. Uh, and so between zero and four, if and only if I have this, if and only if I have this. So it's really the interior of the banana. Right? And so I'm going to see a program that a student of mine in Mexico wrote. And so So what are you what you are seeing there is the skin of the of the two banana shapes. So kind of the skin, so you what you are seeing the skin really is the the matrices that give me parabolic Mobius transformations. And then to see the rest, well you draw the you draw the the, the torus and then and then the uh, you see what lies be, what lies between between the the pink skin and the skin of the torus all that solid uh, region consists precisely of hyperbolics and the interior of the banana of the two shape of the of kind of, of the two sausages uh, consists of the elliptics so so uh, so this gives me a nice visualization of SU11 and hence of SL2R. 